Oh, welcome back. I have torn this town apart. I could not find that book anywhere. I even went into spectator mode. <clears throat> so I went ahead and grabbed the other option, which was I just asked him to tell me again what it was. So let's see what his response is to that, since I can't smack him. The prisoner smiles again, and now you wish you had hit him. Merely this, the rabid child stays at home and talks on a CB. Hammer down and rabbit ears are the only words she knows. If you pass the rabid child, say hammer down for me. Interesting. You turn to the policeman in the corner. Where does this guy live, you demand? Our, let's see, out a ways past the first security checkpoint. Big white house with the corrugated metal roof. Right, you say. This guy knows much more than he's telling, but you're not, you're getting nothing more out of him directly. That's, that is time to go to his house. All right, T. So... Let's see, so we don't need this book, but there's no chest in here. Yeah, okay. Alrighty, so now we are going to... Oh, not that way. Back up here. Let's go ahead and put this in the generator. Oh, wait, actually, you know what? I may need that. Okay, where is this house? Alright says out a ways past the first security checkpoint a big white house with a corrugated metal roof okay now I need to go to his house all right so corrugated metal roof let's see and it's out past the first checkpoint so is that going to be the checkpoint past the movers oops oh is the only way out of town to go down that ladder is there no other stairway out of town okay that's the doctor's office yeah okay what's this like the guard tower huh Oh, no, wait, wait, no, it's, that's not where I meant to go. <laughs> so I don't think we're supposed to go in there. Okay, so let's see. Can we even get out of town this way? Past the first checkpoint, big white house, corrugated roof. Well, there's no checkpoint over here, so... They can't be talking about the house where the guy got shot. So it's got to be out that way. Because see, it looks like there's a road that goes that way. And that's where one of the checkpoints is. Okay, so I don't see a way out or down. No elevator? What? This whole town? No elevator? Let's see security. Okay. Let us go down the ladder. Um, over here. Uh, okay, we have to go through his house. Ooh, how do we get to that? So many things I want to see. Okay, so let's go past the first checkpoint. Now, of course, that could be that guy right there, but the only thing that might even resemble a white house with a corrugated roof is possibly that, and I don't think that's going to be it, because it said big white house with a corrugated roof. Alright, so let's go down here. He said to go past the checkpoint, but there's no real way to get past the checkpoint. Is there? Alright, let's see. White corrugated house. Now see, that kind of looks like a white 
house with a corrugated roof. But how do you get to it? Past the first checkpoint. Huh. I'm not sure. All right, Mayor. Let's go on a trip. Thank you. No, come here. Hey, what's our other horse doing over there? Can you get over this? What are you not? One, are you one of those horses that's really fast but a terrible jumper? Uh, yeah, you must be. All right, there. All right. Hey, you. What are you doing over here? How'd you get over here? Wait, Ted Crilly. <laughs> You're not my horse. <laughs> Okay, so let's see. Definitely not a white corrugated roofed house showing from here. The thing that's confusing is the bit about the first checkpoint. Okay, I still think that's the checkpoint. And I'm thinking the house has to be out here somewhere. Let us see. Fortunately, this... Uh-oh. Nope. Nope, this is a dead end. A very dead end. Okay, so the house has to be in town. And I'm willing to bet it is the house... Wait, what's this? What's this? Hmm, I can't get in there. No. Okay, I guess that's the end of the map. Alrighty, let's go this way. Alright, so now we got to figure out how do we get into that white Mr. Crilly, Mr. Ted Crilly. Oh, hey, the road goes this way. Where does this take us? <clears throat> anything that looks like a white see now that could be a white house with a corrugated roof but it's pink hmm. and this is just a courtyard area okay this is not ooh what are those huh Okay, so yeah, everything must be in town, so we don't, I guess we don't actually leave town ever. Okay, so back over here, and now I gotta figure out how do I get up into that house. See, I bet you it's that house right there, but how do I get up there? That's what I want to know. Alrighty, let's put you back on your lead. Thank you. Uh, let's see. Okay, so there's a way in. But how do we get to that is what I want to know. There's a sign right there. There's a walkway right here. But then we have to come out that way. So maybe we're supposed to go this way, then come out this way, and get into the house. Okay, let's go look at some of the stuff on the other side of the police station and see if... See, we can't get on that thing, that walkway. through here. Alright, so we've done this half of the town, at least the bottom half. We have not gone anywhere upstairs yet. Okay. 
and we think the house is on the other side of the police station so maybe one of these goes into it what's over here ah the corner that gave the corner store its name all right well let's go in maybe they know maybe they know something mike's corner store open 24 7 for your convenience Let's see. I'm actually glad these shelves are empty. I keep bumping them. Wait a minute. Is this the corner store? <laughs> it's a corner store with the uh, man. It's so loud in here. Okay. What's going on in your store, Mike? Minutes since the last robbery, 222 minutes and 222.222 seconds. Jimmy, inept corner store clerk. Hey, Jimmy, today is May 22nd. Okay. Why does my shirt look like the wall? You'll have to ask the manager. I just work here. All right, so nothing going on in the corner store. I don't see any buttons. No uh no dialogue to be had. Okay, so that's not it. So let's go upstairs. Wait, what's this? I don't know what this place was, but it's closed up now. It is. Is there a button anywhere? Nope. Okay, so that's closed up. Hmm, what about these? Are these like apartments? An empty house. <laughs> uh, sneak out this glass of bourbon and we'll go. Sneak out this glass of bourbon and we'll go. Go where? Why are you sneaking a glass of bourbon? Okay. Another empty house. Okay. Oh, what's this? Another utterly empty hole in the wall house. All right. The stairway is rotted clean away. What's going on in here? Mare Fat. This is the mayor's house and his stairway is messed up. That's sad. Oh look, you can see the trees floating down the river better now. Isn't that neat? Okay, this is... So the corrugated, the house that I think is the one with the corrugated roof is like right below us. Alright, what does that say? Mayor Fat, what do you have? An empty lie still little bottle <laughs> you're a strange man mayor oh yeah um here i'll give you my dialogue from prisoner two since i know we're going to the big white house with the corrugated roof the mayor the mayor is sitting in an oversized armchair shaking slightly he has the look of a man who has lost who was once fat but has lost a lot of weight hello he says as you enter who are you you introduce yourself showing him your id i knew you couldn't be from in town he says still shaking i am the mayor and no one ever comes to see me surely you have the occasional city council meeting or something you say and the mayor shakes his head. Not any more. These days I'm just a figurehead. Other people run this city, or what's left of it. Still shaking, he reaches on to the table beside him and grabs a bottle. He shakes out a pill and takes it, sighing as he does so. These days black coffee is not enough for me. I need a better friend. He stops shaking momentarily and leans back in his chair. You ever been to Oak Valley? he asks. Confused, you reply, yeah. I used to run that place, he says. Mayor of Oak Valley, that used to be me. You remember that big tourist attraction that got put in there? That was me. You remember it. 
a rather questionable replica of the famed Col Colosseum of Roma. You went there as a kid once. The train ride was great, the attraction not so much. The mayor now seems lost in happy memories, so you leave him... You leave without having gotten anything to add to your investigation. Okay. Okay, so this is the mayor's house with his torn up sidewalk. And nowhere else to go. No. Okay. So now we have to go. Okay, so we've checked all the houses over here. None of them go to the house next door, which means we have to work our way around. All right, what is this? That's the doctor's office. What is this? Place didn't have a very wide menu, probably why it closed. Fish and chips. I love fish and chips. But no fish and chips in the furnace. Too bad. Ooh, is there a way to get in here? I don't think so. Nope. How do you get in there? Ah. Okay, there's the upstairs. Does it have a door or something? Maybe this is how you get in there. Let's go look. Eh, nope. Get in there. <sighs> there. Good grief. <laughs> Alrighty. So, what's going on in here? Anything? Hmm. No. Alright, so that's the fish and chips place. And there is nothing nothing going on all right so this is not the place that i want to be let's go back over here all right so what is this place hmm i got all my stuff packed up but now where's blue blue what used to be there huh anything Oh, Bongo Tez and his dog Blue. And probably nothing in there. Alright, so that's Bongo's place. And he's fixing to leave like everybody else has been leaving, apparently. Ooh, that's a sharp drop there. It's a giant roll of photographic paper. You don't see that too often. And what's in here? Oh. Hey, look. Up is matte, down is glossy. Instructions. Finished photos get stored here, presumably. Okay. Hmm. Who are you? Malcolm Furlow, photographer. I like your studio, Malcolm. Okay. Oh, that has nothing on it. Is that <laughs> he's got one of those lemons. <gasps> a roll of undeveloped film, a water bottle, a flower pot. I wonder if he's been trading lemons with Grandma, who has probably been making jam and such. Alrighty, let's take his book and see... Ooh, that was close. See what he says. The photographer is flipping through several loose photos as you come up the ladder. Morning, he says. Come to have your picture taken. Not exactly, you say, and explain about needing a forged photograph to get through the... Oh. Okay, we're not supposed to be here yet because... I don't know anything about not getting through security. We haven't even found security yet. Okay, so we're going to have to come back. So let's close this so we'll know that we have not officially been there. 
And let's see what's going on over here. Okay, that's a security camera. Looks like it's dead, though. Okay, the checkpoint won't take my ID. I could probably trick it with a fake one, though. Scan ID to proceed. Forged ID fo oops, photos. Ah, okay. All right, so now we can go see the photographer. But the question is, how would we have even known that the photographer does forge stuff? I mean, nobody has said anything yet. Wouldn't somebody, like, send us over there or something? Okay, so let's go talk to the guy again. So, yes, we want a forged photograph. Let's see, the photographer is flipping through. Okay, not exactly. I need a forged photograph to get through the security checkpoint. The photographer seems initially hesitant, but after you show him your ID, he comes around to the idea. Well, he says, Oops. supposedly you, suppose you could use my dark room. I have a spare roll of film with some pictures of me around here somewhere. You could develop one of those and use that to get through the checkpoint. You'll have to handle it with yourself, however. You recognize that he's trying to protect himself. If this should backfire, which, though annoying, is understandable, you thank him and set about trying to find the film. Okay, now my question is still, why do I need a forged ID? I mean... I'm the police, the district police sergeant. Not just the police sergeant, but the district police sergeant. So why do I need a forged ID? I do not know. I have a feeling I have missed something. All right, so let's read the instructions. All right, gee. let's see. Thank you for your purchase of a Krollmeister automatic developer with film photography coming back having effective developing abilities is a must for any photographer to use insert the undeveloped film into the hopper it will automatically be brought into the processor choose the finish of your new photo glossy or matte by simply flipping the lever to the appropriate position Press the start button and enjoy your photo. Sounds easy enough. A matte finish would be best for what I need, probably. Okay, so that means we got to go upstairs and go grab that roll of undeveloped film that we saw earlier. It looks like a horse's armor. Okay, roll of undeveloped film. I think that's all I need. I don't... Yeah, I don't need a water bottle. Okay. All right, so he said put the, okay, finished photos get stored here, presumably. All right. Okay, so put the roll of film. Okay, hold on. What does it say? Okay, un insert the undeveloped film into the hopper. It will automatically be brought to the processor. Choose the finish. Press the start button. Enjoy your photo. Okay, and we want a matte finish. All right, so um, can I just throw it in, or do I have to actually put it in? Well, let me go ahead and put it in. Okay, so up for, uh, up for matte. And push the start button. Something. Forged photo ID. All right, good deal. So I guess I'll put that one there because since I have to have a forged one, that one's not going to help. All righty, so let's go get through security and then we can head over to the corrugated, the house with the corrugated roof. Scan to proceed. Okay. Is it going to take it? Nope. Okay. Do I need to do that? Oh, 
Look at that. Yes, we made it. We made it. Okay. So, all right. So where do I go now? Loose, whoops, loose wires. Okay, this was a card reader, but it's toasted and the door is locked. Alrighty. Okay, so I can't get through that way. Okay, that goes down, but let, let's look and see what's in here. This place seems completely empty. The guy really lived here? Oh, so this is the house. Okay, apparently this is the house with the corrugated roof. Okay, so he lived here, but it is empty. But he left us a book. Oh, look, he's got the curtains on the window. That's cool. <laughs> okay, um, let's see. An odd house. The emptiness of this place seems completely in fitting with the creep. The only furnishings are a bed and a radio. However, there are also no signs of blood or any other sort of struggle, which does call into question the attempted murder charges. You have a, you have a look at the radio. It doesn't seem to keep logs, so there's no way of knowing what it was used for. Just as you're about to give up, your phone rings. Sorry to interrupt, comes the police captain's voice, but I sent someone out to talk to the DJ, Mr. Claw. He hasn't been into work today, and no one seems to know where he is. That seems to confirm his guilt, but there's more. Also, here's something. The woman who called us in on the attempted murder thing happens to be Mr. Claw's ex-wife, though you should, you should know, thought you should know. An odd connection, perhaps. Where does this woman live, you, you ask? Right up above where you are now, the captain responds. Yellow house built into the side of the mountain. Right, you say. I'll go talk to her. Thanks. Okay, so she is in a yellow house that is on the side. Like that house right there? Okay, so we got to get over there. No, 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 just go up the steps there. Okay, so let us, we're lagging again, sorry about that. Okay, so we can't get in that way. There's loose wires. There's a security camera. All right, but there are stairs that go around to the yellow house. So let's see. Okay, so we're going to go up this way. Back up, get over, get on. Okay. Alright, so up to the yellow house. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, I can just go in right here. Lady, I need to speak with you. Hey, she's got a radio too. Hmm, suspicious, suspicious. And Machiavelli's the prince. So she likes the classics. A. Eh? Nope, give me that. Thank you. Mrs. Claw. The woman is younger than you'd expected, in her mid twenties or thereabouts. She is fiddling with her radio as you enter. Sorry for bothering you this morning, you say, showing her your ID, but I wanted to talk to you about a couple of things. Is this about the attempted murder I saw, she asked. In part, you re reply, but she's already launched into her explanation. She, se she seems to be enjoying herself. It was horrible, she says. I was walking home from the town square and past the house. The man who lives there is just terrifying, a real psychopath. I heard screaming noises and saw, well, something. I could see that through the shade on his window. They said they couldn't find a body and could only charge him with attempted murder. 
but I know he killed someone. Though she clearly is enjoying the momentary fame, you explain that you're actually more interested in knowing about Mr. Claw. Do you know where he is, you ask? She now seems to be greatly hurt. I never want to talk about that man again, she exclaims. I loved him, and he broke my heart. Some might say I'm in love with my broken heart, but I'm in love with the dark or whatever, but it's the truth, and that man is hopeless. She seems to have a flair for the overdramatic. Ma'am, that's well enough, but do you know where he is? He could never listen, either. She continues, ignoring your question. Once I told him, well, I told him a thing or two, and he said he thought I was saying I was... I was an orangutan? <laughs> You'd think someone who worked in radio would be able to listen. Whether or not Mr. Claw can't listen, the former Mrs. Claw clearly can't. You repeat your question a third time, and this time she answers. Oh, I did see him just this morning. As I was getting up, I saw him heading up to the mine house entrance. That's where he lives these days, you know. You quickly make your exit, besides not wanting to get caught up listening to more complaining it sounds like mr claw undoubtedly is the murderer and undoubtedly the murderer is within your grasp hmm so the curtain that we saw must be what she saw him making shadows through or something look at that there's snow on one side and rain on the other side and I think I remember how to make it go away. So let's see. Um, what was it again? Toggle downfall. Is it all one word? Yes. All right. Should should get sunny here in a minute. Okay. So this is another clue. So I think we're supposed to push a button. All right instructions oh that i think that's to our our book is that to our um forge thing yeah okay which we don't have the thingy anymore so we can give her the instructions to making a forged id okay so she said he goes up to this thing here to the mine shaft. Somebody was living out of this old packing crate, but they're not here now. Okay. And they are living on top of her house in an old packing crate. All right, so we want to, oh, and our timer went off, so we want to go and take a short break. Okay, yep, they'll need one of these things. A ladder? What does that say? Okay, those are the rivets for the crate. Ooh, but if I get on that, I won't be able to get down, but I can get up. No, I can't. Okay, well, when we come back, we'll figure out if we need to take this ladder, which I guess we can do, and get up on top. Let's take a quick peek, because there is a sign right there that I cannot read. And it looks like maybe an entrance to something. But we definitely want to go up there, because there's a hatch right there. Okie dokie. So, thank you for joining me, and I will see you shortly. Oh, I can see better this way. Yeah, I think I think we're supposed to go up into the sandstone building first. So we'll do that when we come back and see if we can find Mr. Claw. Alrighty, I'll see you guys later. Bye.